And good morning to you. It is the Daybreak Show. We heard earlier in the week that Central Mason Fire and EMS is beefing up its ambulance fleet after buying longtime privately owned Mason County Medic One. And on the air with us right now from Central Mason Fire and EMS, Chief Tim McKern and Deputy Chief uh, Mike Patty. Good morning, guys. Morning, how, you how, good. Are you? Hey, how are you doing? How are you? Coming on how nice and early good, with us here. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. This is a big deal and a uh, uh, big benefit to the folks in the Central Mason Fire and EMS district. Uh, talk to me about kind of the background, how this got started, and and if there's going to be any changes in operation for well, folks. Well, that's a good question. First off, you say just for Central, it is certainly a benefit for Central Mason, but it's also a benefit for Mason County. Okay. It's a Mason County as a whole, the whole entire county is certainly going to benefit from this whole thing. Um, really, what's what triggered this whole thing was the fact that I call it economic times, if you will. And what's happened is that certainly Mason County Medic One's been around a long time has certainly served the community and done really well. And so us purchasing the company was certainly a joint venture between the two of us. We've certainly uh, got with the owners of that particular organization and uh, talked with those folks. But the cue to it was that really uh, triggered the whole thing was the what we call GEMT money. And what happened in the legislature in 2016 was that they approved what's called ground emergency medical transports. And it's a fund that's out there that is available for fire departments. It's not available for private ambulance companies. So based on the, on the area that you know, the uh, graphics that we have and everything else that's here we found that it was they basically what they decided was med medic ones that it was much better for the service community that we central mason fire or fire district would do that as okay. well so our cue to the word is transparency and when we mean transparency is the citizens are going to see no difference the same two medic units that are currently serving all of mason county will certainly continue to serve all of mason you know the fire district that they currently serve oh, okay. um, and so really on it on the 15th of august uh, you're just going to see a little different locations with that, but the folks certainly are working under our leadership and it will continue to service the, the entire districts that they have before. Was there anything um, different that Medic One, uh, how they responded to calls being a private company versus the way uh, other fire districts would respond to these emergencies? Well, remember that these folks are going to be EMS only responders. Okay. They're not firefighters. They are EMS only responders. We have set up what's called an EMS division within our organization, and that's a, a, a new adventure, as we call that. It'll be in Mike's world. I'm sure he'll love that with this new adventure of it as he's looking at me here yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> for this new folks. But I think uh, we had a meeting yesterday with our, our senior staff of folks, and we're excited. This is a new adventure for us. Sure, it's kind cool. of exciting sure. out there. I've met with the employees because uh, we work with them side by side every day. Yeah. Uh, are they nervous? Absolutely. It's a new adventure for them as well, but we want them to be rest assured that they're welcoming to our central mason family welcomed into the county uh we've we've met with several folks we want to continue with that dialogue uh, all the way around but i think it's a really really positive thing i think this is going to be really a, a new step to a new direction response time as we talk over the over the uh, years here is a uh, key and critical and the seconds matter where are these going to be positioned mike and how will that help with uh, the calls for service well certainly one of them will probably be downtown uh, because of our uh, the amount of uh, EMS responses we have uh, downtown here in Shelton, the second one we want to have in the in the Mountain View area okay. on, on the north end of town, but uh, location at this point really hasn't been determined. There's just we've got to sit back and look at what their um, you know what their run uh, volume has been, where it's been, uh, and what's going to be easiest for them to you know access the freeway or or access Highway Three because they will now be a a county asset and not just going up and down highway 101 talk to me about the rigs themselves i know we've talked over the years about ways that you guys have looked to raise money to buy kind of basically the the skeleton of the ambulance and you can change out parts uh, mm -hmm. where where are these in their longevity scales and and uh, then they're traditionally blue and white right the colors Correct. are blue right. and white Currently. so to get the paint Correct. job and all that Correct. And that'll all happen down the road. The, uh, certainly, that's not real high on the priority list. Um, but we're looking at the condition of the rigs. Uh, our mechanic, we have we have a mechanic, a dedicated mechanic on our staff, and he'll have a chance to go over the rigs and with a fine tooth comb. And we talked yesterday. We'll probably do the same uh, service to those two apparatus that we did to our ambulances a couple of years ago, where we lift the box off the patient compartment and put new chassis under it. It's mm -hmm. certainly uh, a less expensive way it's faster uh, to get apparatus back in service and that's that's a big thing for us is is a keeping the cost down and b getting them back in service oh, whole cool. thing half million bucks 
on the surface that doesn't seem like a, a lot. So is that a, is that a pretty good deal? It, it's it's actually a <laughs> it's actually a really really good deal for, for what we got. Keeping in mind that all of this will be paid with the increased transport revenue. Yeah. So in essence, if you want to think about it as a box, it's all going to get paid within its own box. Um, it's not being affected at all by the current budget that we currently have. Yes, we're going to amend our budget. Yes, we'll have a separate line item just for the for the folks at Medic One, but. Uh, uh, it's an absolutely amazing deal, and we can't thank Mr. Lojohn and, and his support. He's definitely a community person. You know, he's been around a long time, and and it the timing was right, and we've still been communicating with him. And he, uh, their Olympic Ambulance Fleet will still help us with some interfacility stuff. So I think that it's a, it's the right thing. The right very time. nice, very nice. Uh, let's move to the fires and just kind of in general. How are the conditions changing? What are you guys hearing? I know Vicky's been updating us on the weather reports, and uh, we're still not seeing a heck of a lot of rain in the future. But things seem to be cooling off. Is that going to help? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's cooling off. Certainly, the humidity recovery overnight helps us. Yeah, um, we're still having brush fires, especially uh, mid to late afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, but they're not a, of a frequency that we were having in the months of August and and July. Sure. So, uh, and looking at the weather reports that we've been looking at the last week, the temperatures are going to continue to go down. So, hopefully, there's some rain out there someplace. We we need it desperately. Very nice. Tim McKern, Mike Patty, Central Mason Fire and EMS. We're talking about the buying up of the privately owned Mason County Medic One, and that will take effect on September 15th, improving EMT services to everybody in our area. Very cool. That's so cool. Nice. So thank you guys for coming in and talking thanks, with us here. Thanks for giving us the opportunity. Absolutely. To Always nice talking That's with you.